that said that AI is not going to take over your job, someone using AI is going to take over your job, right? Wow. Someone wow. Now I can tell you that's over my head, but, and I'm sure it's over a lot of your head, but for those that really looking to see the hottest profession, the opportunities out there, this is one that you must check into. Hi, this is Robert Wilkins, AKA Basketball Tall. Welcome to my channel. You are in for a treat today because I've got some guys with me that have done tremendous things in their young career. And mom and dad, grandparents, step-parents, gather the kids all around because all of you are gonna to wanna to hear this. And surprisingly, for the first time since I've had this channel, it's the first time I'm bringing these young men on my show. And they're my two sons, who I call Dalen and Trey. Now, Trey, of course, is Robert Wilkins III, but you can see why we would call him Trey. These guys, have careers that's, in my mind, off the chart. And they didn't follow in their dad's footsteps neither. We're talking one is a software engineer and the other's a cloud architect. And in case you wanted, wanted to know, you know, about the details of these type jobs, I'm sure they'll give you a little snippets of it. But also I want you to know too, at the conclusion, at the end of this, in case you want to look at other careers and professions, in which a couple of years ago, I did a show called the top 15 jobs in America. Now, of course, we're not gonna just talk about jobs here today, but it's gonna stir your soul, whatever we're gonna talk about. So let's get to so, it. And Let me bring them in, my two grown sons, Trey and Dalen. Hey guys, how you doing? Doing good today. Yep, right. Doing good. Hey, that's awesome, that's awesome. Now. People have never seen my kids before. And, you know, me being in the criminal justice field, that's by design. And uh, and the thing is, now here you guys are all grown up and off in your careers. And Dalen, you're over in Los Angeles, California area. And Trey was in Nashville, Tennessee, now back in Oklahoma. And I just want you guys to know, Mom and I, we're very proud of what you guys have done with your lives. Folks, I want you to know, our in our home when they were growing up, actually, they were inventors. They started out like inventors at an early age. Here we're talking about Trey. He developed some type of device. What was it? Uh, like some type of invisible talking device. And when I say invisible, I meaning you couldn't see it, but it put some type of cap on your tooth and you can talk. Now, when he went to go get it, uh, what was it, patent or whatever, discovered that there was somebody else had something similar out there. Then later on, he created a hedge fund. That's right, a hedge fund. And the thing about it is he could read anything and develop anything. I remember when we were uh, involved in summer track, USA track and field, in which we went all over the country, both my sons, and they each advanced to the National Junior Olympics every year. And the thing is, we'll be riding in the car and Trey was our map guy. Y'all, do you guys remember the maps before we had uh, GPS? And Trey would have the map back there. He's just a kid, about 10 years old, and he can tell me which mile marker we were coming up on from a map. Can you believe that? Not just that, there's Dalen, three years old, back there reading an instruction booklet of a video game. <laughs> can you imagine that, three years old reading? And he was always seeking information on how to play and beat those games. Now, since I told you about some of the things Trey did when he was a kid, let me tell you a little bit about Dalen. Dalen created this ball of light <laughs> and, and a speaker. You know, I forgot on how you were, but you was young. And, you know, and I got a picture of that. Now, if I could find it, I'll put it up and share with everybody where he's holding this light contraption he created in some kind of speaker thing. This is and not just that, speaker that, that was made. when he was in the ninth grade in high school, the governor of Oklahoma had some type of contest going on and he won it with a couple of his friends. He won it. And then the first lady, our governor, came to Ardmore High School in the auditorium in front of his peers and awarded him a prize, which was a CD TV. <laughs> you remember that, Dalen? But folks, each one of these kids, now men, when they were kids, they had library cards. Parents, 
Remember that. Reading is important. And I can tell you, and this is not a brag, but this is just to share. This is wisdom as of my age, sharing with those out there that maybe can help somebody on this journey of life. And Trey had an ACT of 25, and Dalen had an ACT of 31. And they didn't take any classes, but of course, they did use computer software. <laughs> okay. The, what was that? The Gatlin, ACT, SAT, and all of that. But folks, I'm going to shut up right now because, you know, like any parent, we can talk all day and brag about our children. So as you see them there, those are my sons. Guys, come on. Let's come on in here. Let's talk a little bit. So what's going on today? First of all, let's start. Well, I'm going to do it this way. We're going to start with the old and come down, okay? Frank, tell everybody a little bit about, about yourself. What is it that you do? What is a cloud architect? What is that? Yeah, so uh, what I am, I'm a, I'm a, a cloud architect. Uh, I specialize in Google technology. So you could say a Google cloud architect. But, you know, how everyone has used uh, Google search or Google maps, um, Google has their own servers, networking equipment, storage that they use. And they also have extra equipment that they basically will rent out to anyone, whether you're just uh, a regular person starting out or whether you're a business. And so really what I do on behalf of the company that I work for, um, teams of engineers will want to build something. And I put together those pieces from Google to support what they're building. So if they have software, I can create a server for them for that software. I can put the network together for that software. Uh, if they need some storage for like storing pictures or storing documents, I can get that all put together for them as well. So it's almost like, uh, you know, getting Lego pieces and putting those Lego pieces together. And it's just that those Lego pieces come from Google and uh, are different, you know, pieces of technology. Well, well, tell me this. So what is it required to be in a profession such as that? What is it that those out there listening right now need to know? What is it that they need to do? What do they need to study? What type of degree or whatever? So really, the, I guess the cool thing is that there is no degree. Uh, you really just have to have uh, a want to uh, deal with technology and learn about this stuff. Um, Google actually has some really good um, training tools. I want to say one of them, if you if you can just, of course, search it. Uh, it's called Google Quick Labs. I think Q-W-I-K-L-A-B-S. Um, you can just go on there. Uh, a lot of the classes on there are free. Some of them you do have to pay for. But you just go through those and just they give you like uh, hands on uh, labs and and courses and quizzes for you to go through. And if you want to actually become a cloud architect, they have specific um, courses lined up for that. You just sign up for it. A lot of times Google will give you like a scholarship uh, to learn the, the entire course and you just go through, you take it. And at the end of it, you can actually take a, uh, a certification to become an official cloud uh, architect. But uh, really, as long as you know those real world scenarios, you know how, uh, how to use the things uh, hands on, uh, you can become a cloud architect. It's uh, it's not that difficult. You know, there's a lot of articles today. How people are talking about college and and how people are getting jobs without degrees because they have such skills. And what you just talked about, how there's a lot of you know training and classes people can take out there and get certified in these particular areas and still make an, a tremendous outstanding income. Yeah, it really is. It, I, I think it's amazing um, that, yeah, you don't, have to, you don't have to go to college if you don't want to. I, there are some benefits still to going to college, but there are other avenues, whether you can afford college, um, or it's just, you know, socially not your thing. Maybe, you know, might have some social awkwardness or something like that where college may not be the fit for you. But yeah, you can just go out and you can go on the Internet, learn some topics and you can, you know, get a well-paying job uh, without uh, going to college. Mm. You know, uh, just for those of you that are watching this right now, you know, when my kids graduated high school, they both went to college in pursuit and computer science. But anyhow, 
let's move to my baby boy who's six feet, seven inches tall. And as you know, the name of my channel is Basketball Tall. So anyway, he's the tallest of the bunch of all three of us. And so let's bring him in here. Dalen, come on, son. Tell everyone, what is it, your, what is your title and what is it that you do? Educate those that are listening right now. Yeah, so I'm a software engineer. Um, I'm currently working at Adult Hub. And as a software engineer, I do program, uh, write code. But I'd say primarily what I do at the job is uh, form solutions to different problems. So sometimes that means that I'll, um, my boss or I'll identify a problem that we have at the job um, or a need that a customer wants. And uh, I might spend weeks uh, not even necessarily writing anything, you know, with just a pencil and a paper and uh, figuring out what the best way to solve that problem would be. Um, and eventually I will uh, write code to actually uh, implement that solution. Um, but yeah, a lot of what I do is problem solving and uh, kind of similar to some of those math equations that some people have had back in uh, middle school and high school where they're the word problems that people don't really enjoy so much. Um, that's closest to really what I do. You know, I must say this. Now, I know that for you guys, you guys had fun. Now, as you can see in the background here, I'm in the game room. And for those of you that always see this, when I do one of my programs, my episodes or whatever, you know, this was where they hung out. This is where they were on the computers and you can see and just bring their friends and this was the spot. But now it's my office because they're all grown up, got their own place and their own families. Okay, so let me ask you guys this. Since you're into the tech world, the IT, the engineering field, you know, I like to almost say engineering is, a, you know, all oh, that's IT, but I know Dalen corrects me all the time, but it's not IT. It's not quite IT. Um, I guess just for a clarification there for those that may not know. Um, IT differs from like programmers and engineers. Um, you could kind of think of it as an analogy of like the car manufacturer and the mechanic. Um, the car manufacturer who actually designs the cars, those would be your engineers, your programmers and all of that much. And then whenever you've actually got the car built and then the car needs servicing, maintenance and all of those kind of things, that'd be more what IT people would do. So we both operate on the same group of things, but we kind of have different roles of what we do. And the skills aren't necessarily transferable either. Those that are really good IT people don't necessarily always make the best uh, software developers and vice versa. Those that develop software aren't necessarily always good at uh, supporting those and figuring out routines and all of those kind of things that the customers may need. Yeah, And, and to that, uh, I think Dalen actually put it pretty well. Um, you know, like for my role, sometimes I do kind of, I, I do write a little bit of code but I wouldn't consider myself a software engineer. I work alongside software engineers um, to build things, but mainly my job, uh, once they have the code built, the software built, is to support what they've built and to build things that work along with what they've built. But yeah, very well put, Dalen. Wow, wow. Now I can tell you that's over my head, but and I'm sure it's over a lot of your head. For those that really were looking to see the hottest profession, the opportunities out there, this is one that you must check into. Now, I know, uh, you know, we mentioned about AI, artificial intelligence, and how that may, you know, affect some industries. What is it like as far as what you're hearing in your arena as far as AI is concerned? I, I can take this one. Okay. So um, from, from what I've been seeing so far, uh, and I've been digging into AI quite a bit since November 2022, uh, uh, since ChatGPT really got released to the public, um, is that AI may take over some small routine things, but it's not, it's not going to take over a lot of jobs. Uh, there was a quote that I heard from somebody that said that AI is not going to take over your job someone using AI is going to take over your job, right? Someone's going to write something to automate your, you know, if you're doing data entry, right? Your job is to go into Excel and um, fill out a lot of different uh, forms and things like that on Excel. 
someone can just write a program uh, using AI and then use that AI to do the same thing that you're doing. And it doesn't necessarily mean that that particular data entry job is going to go away. It just means that if you are that data entry person whose job may be threatened by AI, that you have an opportunity to start to skill up, right? Learn a different skill now on how you can also use AI to augment what you're doing or to help uh, assist you in doing that data entry. So then you gain more value and you can't necessarily be replaced by uh, AI. Well said, well said. Anything you want to add to that, Dale? Yeah, um, kind of just like what Trey was saying. Um, I don't necessarily think AI is going to replace all different jobs that are out there. And uh, some of those jobs that can be automated and some of those jobs already are automated, um, even pre-AI, just kind of depends on the particular job's workflow of how they uh, manage those programs and uh, those kinds of things. But um, yeah, AI is something that I myself use. Um, I haven't used it too much uh, with my job, um, but I have used it in some outside pursuits that I've been doing uh, that have involved uh, some programming and things like that. And um, it's been a really big help for me. Um, however, it does have its limitations. And uh, there is a lot of information and a lot of, I'd say, fear around AI about how it's just going to take over the world and everyone's going to be without of a job and all of those kind of things. And I do think a lot of that's overblown. Um, one of the things that AI uh, can't really replace almost on a fundamental level is determining and figuring out what needs to be solved. So even like, for example, um, if I have uh, an issue at work and um, I need to you know, find a solution for that, um, I still need to come up with what the idea, like number one, we have to identify the problem um, before we can even work on a solution to identify the problem. AI will not necessarily know how to do that because we need to go in and figure out what exactly is wrong and figure out what exactly it should be doing. Um, so that's not something that AI would be doing. Second, then we need to actually identify what should go in place for that solution. Um, and that's something, again, that we have to decide. AI would not be able to decide that for us. Now, once we have the course of action, you know, and we figure out, okay, well, we might need to write this code in order to do that, then someone can go write that code. Nowadays, um, sometimes, that uh, code writing is done in another country uh, and there are issues around that with uh, you know exporting certain jobs to foreign countries for cheaper labor things like that but basically AI would slot in at that point um, so it's not really going to make that much of a difference because companies are already uh, you know exporting some of these jobs overseas and you could essentially think instead of doing it that way they just use AI instead but for some of the jobs uh, that require a lot of critical thinking and uh, those kinds of things, then AI really won't be able to touch those jobs. Mm, mm. Thank, thanks, Tate. Thank both of you guys. Well said, well explained, both of you. Now, for those of you that are liking what you're hearing here today, go ahead, press that like button, subscribe, and also share. Don't just hold this into yourself because there are a lot of people out there that are seeking information, something that may be beneficial for them, maybe their grandkids, maybe a friend that can put them on a track that they hadn't even thought of. Because how many of you right now that are watching this that have thought about the tech world? How do you get involved? What does that need to do? And by the way, because my channel is about hope. It's about dreams. It's about giving people belief that if someone else can do it, you can do it too. My sons are a prime example of that. And this is not to bring them on board, to brag about them, to elevate them in any way. They've earned their stripes, but also to open your eyes, to let you know what's out there that you've never even thought of that may be able to benefit you in some good, positive way. And hey guys, as we're about to close here, and by the way, I also want to say one thing. If you like for them to come back on this channel again, and we do another episode, maybe something different, but as you can know, it's going to be valuable information that's going to help somebody. Not just that, may even teach you. 
And if that's the case, go ahead and subscribe. So that way you don't miss out on any episode. And if you want, go ahead and leave a comment. We welcome all comments. We want to hear from you. And if you want them to come back, whatever it is, please leave that comment. And we might just make that happen. But as we're about to close here, guys, I want to thank you, sons, for being on my channel today. Because, you know, I can tell you this. No one loves you more than me. Well, except maybe mom. But the love, you guys just don't know. You know. <laughs> I don't have to tell you. Yeah. Love, but as we love. get ready to depart here, is there anything that you want to say to my audience? And if so, I give each one of you the final word. One of the biggest things I think that really helped us on both Dalen and I on our path is access to information. So whether we were at the house, um, you know, there were books that we had access to, encyclopedias that we had access to, National Geographic, things like that that we had access to. Once you, uh, you know, once we got the computer in the house, now we had access to the internet. Again, more information. We always had access to information. Uh, like in my room, I had not just encyclopedias, but I had like engineering books. I had a book on physics, a book on thermodynamics. Um, but there was always the access to information. And I think that's a really good starting point, uh, really for anyone. Uh, kids, adults, um, that's wanting to kind of get into something, kind of elevate where they are in life, not just uh, in, uh, a job or, you know, something that they're doing that in that uh, arena, but having access to information uh, almost at all times uh, can really be helpful. Oh, that yeah. was really, that was really good. Dalen, anything you would like to add? Yeah, um, just that uh, kind of similar to what Trey was saying, um, access to information is very critical and uh, very important to kind of getting us to where we are today. Um, but also to experimentation, you know, um, kind of like what dad was saying earlier, uh, both when we were kids, we did a lot of things. We tried a lot of different things and played around with a lot of different things. And, you know, at a young age, you know, especially with our early minds, that really helps fuel our creativity and our passion to want to make things, you know? And so just allowing kids that opportunity to go out, learn and build and tinker, you know, and like really enhance that skill set at a young age. Um, but also too, I would say, uh, letting people follow their passions and follow their dreams. You know, sometimes we might have uh, certain ways and directions that we want people to go in life. And, you know, someone at an early age is especially showing that there's a strong interest in some path, you know, like let them explore that path, you know, let them uh, take that to the best of their ability, because for all we know, that really might be uh, what their God given talents are assuring them that direction to go. <laughs> hey, Dylan, this is Coach and you know Charlie. why I'm Welcome laughing, Dylan. <laughs> uh, you know, and I'm going to tell everyone this. Uh, hey, when Dylan uh, uh, basketball, and basketball. he played the 5A school, and uh, there were several coaches that called and wanted them to wanted him to play for their team, play college basketball, and he decided he didn't want to play anymore. And you can imagine me playing college basketball. That was a tough one for me. And my wife, she said, you know, he's not you. You know, and you have to let him follow his path. And that, that I'm, I got to admit, that was tough for me for a moment. But the thing is, both of you were right. And when I say both of you, because it was the same with Trey. <laughs> you know, and so in saying that, parents, if you set your kids up early on, especially with reading, that is so vital because of the understanding of so many things. And from my profession, in which I retired, so many kids were not good readers and why they weren't doing well in school. And so they just gave you some great nuggets that I think. If any of you, no matter how old you are, take to heart, it can it can definitely pay off. Can't do nothing but make you improve. I want to thank everyone for watching this today. And like I said, if you'd like to have them back on my channel, go ahead, leave me a comment. Let me know. Press that like and subscribe button. And keep in mind, this Robert Wilkins, a.k.a. Basketball Tall, 
at basketballtalk.com. We'll see you next time.